Chatty for a fairly good friend of mine who trains at a gym called Chatty. So we just want to chase him down today, see, and see if we can get him. Because he's a bit of a rat. Well, he's a fucking cockroach, isn't he? See, this one does your fucking head in. You spend half a day ringing around people. Yeah, what exactly happened was uh, this chap who owed me the debt was originally a partner with my daughter. They were going to get married, they bought a property, they were getting a property together, etc. We thought he was smashing, but unbeknownst to us, he was not nice to our daughter. We don't like people who profess to be something and they're not the something else. We don't want people to be nice to us or to members of our family and then they're not nice behind our backs. What that is, it's called bullying. I'm not a nasty person. I'm not six foot three and bulletproof. But when I found out what he's done, I felt like smashing him to pieces. He slapped me daughter, he hit her, and if I could have got hold of him, I'd have strangled him. But I'm glad I didn't. And I'm glad that there was somebody like Sean who sat me down and said to me, Phil, never do anything in anger. You've got to do everything legal and above board. Well, we've just, we've just found him on, uh, on a site on the internet with a picture of him. So we're going to take a picture of that. Uh, just so we've got him. Name is shamed. So uh, he began to call tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, first one in a couple of months I've not worn a balaclava. <laughs> This guy we're going to see now has no idea. He's owed his death from last year. But Nat and Tony know him. It's come out. They know him fairly well. So I'm initially going to go in and speak to him and tell him how it is, what he's got to pay, why I'm here. Don't fuck with me. You don't need no two I am. You know, I don't want the lad to lose his job, even though he's a fucking rat as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but you know, I'm not a cunt. I want to pull him and tell him how it is, and it's got to be paid. You can just tell me I can be friends. It's a good day for me, it's a bad day for you. You know Nat, Nat, Nat and Tony, don't you? I'm a debt collector, like Clet Chet. Chet, he's a good friend of mine. OK. You've said you'll loan it that, you said you'll pay it, right. and you haven't. Right, so okay. basically, we come on, you're taking a piss, and Chet, he's a fucking tough fella. OK. As okay. long as we come to an agreement today right. that it gets paid, it gets paid. OK. If it's not, I fuck off, and them two speak to you. Right, OK. If you want to know who I am, go and fucking Google no, me. No, 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 it's OK. <laughs> I didn't know a ginger lad could go even whiter. <laughs> Fuck, mate, he shook me hands. Fucking sweat and buckets. So it's a good day. One, he'll pay. Two, he's going to pay us a drink for coming down, so it's happy. Chaddy just walks down out with a grin on his face. To me, it's not a job. I am dead happy for him. But there's loads of people like that everywhere. And people need to just stand up to people like these. Because there's people like me everywhere. It's not just me. There'll always be a debt collector. Someone will always owe someone. People go to courts. Courts are like debt collectors, aren't they? Get divorced, I want the back kitchen suite. I want the car, I want this. Before people don't that, they come to us. We're cheaper and we'll probably get the job done quicker. Basically what's happened today, an employee who I have, that I've only had for a couple of months, uh, we give him a job on a trial, he's he, he done well, he, he's not a bad kid, he is a good kid actually. And I've had rumours he's been selling juice in the gym, which we just don't abide by. There is lads in here that do use steroids, but they use it in the house. And what they do is behind closed doors, it's none of my business. I'm not into that crap, it's nothing to do with me. Now there's another lad in here with a tattoo on his head, not totally upstairs, it's a different land. And I've looked after this kid for like four or five months. They can either have a, a dig or they can admit what they've done, pay me a bit of profit back, still take him in the gym. If they deny you, the two of them are going to get a crack, and that's it. Still, still, still. 
that and this is a couple of things I want to bring up. Yeah. Right, this is not, I'm not fucking about. I'm fucking dead, dead serious here. Right, really fucking dead serious. You know me, I don't give shit, I don't take shit. Here's how serious I want to be. I'm going to be selling fucking gear in my fucking gym, you cheeky twat. You know you have me, I'm, I'm not, not sure. Yeah, no, don't fucking lie to me. You are being given in gear. I'm shocked at you for selling fucking gear. That's all I think. Yeah, don't. Since what? Since yesterday? She said. No, since he said we were selling from the fucking house, now you've been selling from here. I said I'd back you up, Stu. Yeah, you did. I, I said I'd back you, you up, that Jim. Fucking forget about the camera. This Sorry. is business, mate. This is fucking business. Only that I know Chaddy and he's related through Chaddy. Okay. I will fucking flatten you, mate, okay. put you on the floor, right? I'm but I know you're going to need me to work with you with that prick. Normally, it gets off you, don't yeah. think? So, from me, point of view, he's buying off you, you're giving it to him, you sell it in my gym. What, what do I do? Might as well bend over the camera go, yeah, have a go with that. It's not business, is it? No, I understand that. Hey, it's not business. You've made money, you've made money, I've earned fuck all. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tax you a grand. You can give me a grand to keep your job, stay in the gym. If you don't want to give me a grand, by the end of the day, I'll smash your head in, and I'll smash your head in. What do you want to do? Simple as that. Right, hey, hold your head up, I'm sorted. Yeah, okay. I'll come up now. I've got a couple of tears. I'll come up. That just had to be done, just a little bit slap. It is only a bit slap, but they've made money in you my made business. Money this gym. So, so I want it. That's I've got bills money. here. I owe rent, I owe lecky, I owe everything else. I'm not a fucking millionaire. Business is business, but it's worked, and that's the way we do work. He's been like that man, everything goes to him, and he's told me. God, he's been like that man, he's not a fucking snake. I, I don't, if I see something going on, it's him, I tell him, but I don't know about this. He's my best mate. It's called loyalty. You he's can't like, buy it. He's like my dad, didn't man with me. We're fucking loyal as fuck, that's the way it goes. Nothing wrong has happened, like nothing was done wrong. It was just lack of communication, really. Sean, he's, he'll help you out, he'll go to end of earth for you. But the minute that you think that you cross him, it's a bad move. I don't really want to because I know, I know who he is. I'd rather work with him than against him. I have to now pay him about £500. It's, it's only fair, really. Here's his gym. So I can't argue with that, really. Everything goes through Sean, basically. The lads know they've got off lightly with the telling off because a slap is nothing compared to the extremist tendencies Sean was capable of in the past. I was really here told you. I'm inflicted, I can't fucking tell you that. I get locked up. I'm being locked up. I'd be an idiot to tell you what I've done, but hey, what I've done to people in my eyes that deserve it, I want it fucking done to me. And yeah, cause and effects, you know, I, I, I don't sleep. I'm on like 150 mil of serotonin, 80 milligram of propranolol, 7.5 milligram of zoprocone. I have baritosophagus, which is a precancerous disease in my throat. I have a tumour on my liver. I'm waiting to go in and have a knock on my stomach now to remove. Pollop, so I'm a vegetarian, don't eat meat. Self farming, that's because of all the problems I've had depression, anxiety, panic attacks. I would just love to be a normal person. I think I am normal. I think my life is normal, but sometimes I like to just come in the gym, open the gym, just say, just talk to one or two lads in the gym, just a normal conversation, and then you get that one and go, Oh, aren't you sure? Blah, blah, from there, and you think, oh. Sean Smith was an extremist who specialised in spreading terror for no rational gain. But the hidden costs of this guerrilla war haunts him to this day. I've had these for like 20 odd years. Uh, you know, to a lot of people, they don't mean nothing, but to me, you do mean a lot, you know. I'm the greatest King Kong. No, you know, fucking I am. Here's me there in a the suit. I'm, I'm not the greatest, but that's just, I'm superstitious like that, do you know what I mean? It's true, but to me, to me, it's a ritual I have every day, just little things, you know, right hand for paying out, left hand for receiving. So, you know, I want the left hand to all the time to receive money, have a lot of bills. Are you religious? No. <laughs> <laughs> just people laughing here. No, no. I don't believe in God and all that, no, no, I don't. Although I do the sign of the cross and... That's just respect for like people that's passed away. And I've <laughs> probably a few people I've put away myself. <laughs> yeah, I know I know 
I know it's not to laugh about, but uh, that's just like people are born into. It's like, you know, I've just lost a, a great friend of mine, John Mulch, British champion kickboxer, world champion kickboxer, and to go from such a powerful man. We watched some fade away in Thailand last week, and that was like tearful. I had to walk out, out you know, I, I get a bit choked now. <laughs> Just let that moment pass. But you know what happened to the, the best of people? I have been scared of dying in the past, but I think because I've had four or five attempts on my life, and when I did get kidnapped and locked in a container, and they were shooting at the container and ramming the can. And I honestly thought I was going to die that day. I pissed myself. I thought I'm going to fucking die here. And then you pass that fear because the fire and the gun of the steel container, the ram on the car, and the pouring and petting and the saying are going to light it. You have this sort of this sort of being where you think, no, I'm not going to if I'm going, if I'm going to die. I'll go out fucking fighting or I'll go out going. I'm not going out cowering in the corner. You know what, the lad's somewhere in. He's actually on YouTube. He put, he put a gas a gas canister on his wheelchair and let the gas go and fired his wheelchair along like a rocket. Didn't he? <laughs> put one run out of gas because the guy wouldn't sell his new fire extinguishers. He only sold the second hand ones and he made a scratch his company logo off in case I died. I just thought, fuck it, I'll, I'll, if I die, I die. <laughs> Since you last interviewed me, and you see me, you know, with the the cut that was on my stomach, I got out, just carried on with the uh, drugs. I was sat in the bath, had enough, slashed my face, and uh, but I hit the artery on my forehead, uh, on my side of my head here. Um, and the blood was just squirting out. Good job my dad was in the house, I was sat in the bath. The bath was just covered in blood. Last night was, was a good thing for me because I got diagnosed. They know what the problem is with my mental health now and everything. It's um, emotional unstable personality disorder um, triggered by the child abuse. I feel a lot more positive and more confident that I'm gonna nail it this time that I'm gonna beat me demons. All right, I've had demons for 20 years, but I've gone to battle with them and I've lost. Now I've declared war on them. And they ain't gonna, I might have lost some battles, but I ain't losing the war. Fuck that. I ain't gonna carry these war scars for nothing. <laughs> Luke, the boss now, he's my older brother. He didn't speak to me for a couple of months. Uh, and they give me one last chance. It's a good way to keep me off all the gear and shit. I'm surrounding myself with positive people, with a positive sport, rather than negative dickheads with dickhead drugs. There we go. Don't refuse a proposition. You will be made next week. You will be taking. They got a nice big debt in here tomorrow. Go. You will be taking on fresh vitality during the next few weeks. That's good, that mate. Get ready for your fight. A bit of vitality. Get ready. Get fresh, hungry. Win the belt. Back. Get a fresh bit of gear then. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need to do belt. <laughs> your lucky number two will keep your future fine. Fuck off, bollocks. Right, so what I'm going to show you is you remember from last time in the office when we had the little listens with uh, over like the steroids with the two lads. Tony, the lad who was like, oh, I'll take for sure, I'll do anything for sure. If you remember, jumped up in the office and it's tried to whip one of the lads with a pathetic punch. The little cockroach 
was already selling steroids in and around the gym on the way to me. And then lo and behold, we come in on the Friday morning, he's not here, the lads are putting the door down. A couple of lads have gone up, they're kicking the door in, he's not there. So we check our cameras and here he is now, leave him here. Look, here's the little cockroach now, look at him. Fucking boils my blood, look at that. He's left his beards, left all his kids, and as long as he's all right, he took no one else's stuff on his own. Look, look, his head in his hands, look, he's like, oh. You see the money? That is tootin' barbs. We know this contact, so he buys them off. So we're waiting for them to ring up and buy some more. And then, you know, you're gonna have a bit of an accident. Yeah, because it's not going. I really helped that kid. I really did help him. And he just shit on me big time. Not having it. This is Tony's. This is where Tony lived and, you know, he ran the gym for me. This room hasn't been cleaned out yet. Uh, you know, look at that. You know, it's fucking disgusting. You know, he's a personal trainer. He, he, you know, he, he's a, he trains people and he's writing people diets. You know, how the fucking hell can he live like this? You know, so it was like 87 bags of big scattered all over the couch, all, all over here. All this stuff is his, what with bins, it's just fucking junk. Who's all just a big fucking front? You know? But that's, that's what drugs do to you. This is Tony's paraphernalia that we found upstairs. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, he's, he's taking stegs. Well, I, I think it's stegs. It's a two said anyway. It could be edible for all I know. Um, and they haven't had a good look through it, to be honest. That, that's a coke bag being used. That looks like a, a beak bag. And what the... Look, I don't even know what they are, but, you know, they're going in the bin. I don't know fucking bin, that's... Bad shit, you know, he's just got up and left, you know what I mean? He's left, you know, crappy watches. Bin, bin, fucking ring going in the bin. I hope he sees this. Bin. And all that fucking juice that he's paid for, that can go in the fucking bin as well. But you know what? I wouldn't give him back a fucking bottle of fresh air that can go in the fucking bin where it is. That's where he'll be going. Cockroach. Tasty, I'll be back in a minute. Oh, God. No, I'm not just a bit stressed out, mate. I'm proper bound up to death because my mate's up there has been out for near 300 grand. Tony's had me off for three and a half thousand, which is a lot of money. Some people might think, ah, you know, he's got a drug problem, give him a hand. Well, I give him a hand, that's why he was there with me. Everything was there for him. And to get shit on, and it's just, everything's negative, you know, and it just, it affects me in every little way. It's like, I think, oh, you fucking little maggot. And you think, is it fucking worth it? Is it all worth it? And sometimes I think, look me seven a minute ago, what the fuck are you doing? Why, why, do you, why are you taking on other people's headaches? You do feel responsible and you shouldn't do because it's not my problem. I never created this problem. I'm just there to try and sort it out for you and I'll do it the best I can. But I feel, you know, well, I don't know if I should say this, there's no one there to sort my problems out. I have no one. It's so fucking hard, mate, because people look up to you and expect you to be there. Oh, shoulder to cry on and, you know, well, hang on, I get fucking fed up as well, you know. <laughs> you know, my my little things is like, you know, I, I would love to have uh, my daughter on camera and seeing a, a different side of me, but I don't I don't trust people out there, you know. I don't want them to see my daughter, that's that's my... I don't want my wife on her either. You know, everyone loves the kids and everyone's got the best kid, but she's just an adorable kid, you know, I have five daughters. I'd love to show you me being... Yeah, I let them put throw it on me face and, you know, put bows in your hair. Yeah, these are kids, are you? You know, I look stupid. But, uh, hey, I don't, I'm just a dad, you know. Since filming this, Sean hit the jackpot, landing the biggest deal of his career, a £1 million debt in Portugal. The payoff was a much-needed all-expenses holiday in the sun. After all, going straight hadn't turned out to be the quiet life he'd once dreamt of. 
Nat is still working with his brother. He's clean and no longer self-harming. He's also busy training for his pro boxing comeback, his last shot at the title. Tony is still on the run. His family fears if he comes back, he may go on the missing list forever. <laughs>